This morning we're continuing coverage of Demetrius, Wil Demetrius Wilson and the gaps in the system that led to his death. It has been six months since the eight-year-old boy was found unresponsive. His great aunt is now charged with his murder. 90s reporter Darius Johnson has been following this story for months and he has partnered with Nine Wants to Know to learn exactly what happened to Demetrius. A sweet little boy. Now records show the boy missed an excessive amount of school, but gaps in the district's attendance policy didn't warrant any intervention that could have saved his life. Every day he would come running in through the little fence and he would say, Miss Gibson, hi! And did you miss me if he had been gone for a few days? When kids are missing, Reed Gibson always notices. Yeah, I did miss you. We all missed you. And he would go, oh, really? Okay. Demetrius Wilson was often absent from her second grade class. And he never, ever said anything. Always just so happy, that huge grin on his face. I wish I had seen through that to be able to know that something was going on. I just wish that, yeah, I had been able to hug him more, give him more love, knowing that he clearly did not get a lot of that at home. Demetrius's family obtained his attendance records from the 2021-2022 school year at Ashley Elementary. He was under the care of his great aunt Susan Baffour, who is now charged with his murder. That year, Demetrius and his older sister, Noelle, missed 60 days. Missed 60 days? That's half of school. Why didn't you call or send somebody to the house to see what's wrong with the, with, with the kids. Demetrius's father, Anthony Wilson, and his aunt, Candace White, were isolated school. from the kids, unaware yeah. of their absence from school. Now, okay. they want answers. My question is, it was okay for them to be sick four out of five days a week on multiple weeks? Nobody thought. I was speaking to somebody and they said, well, COVID. Well, COVID, you're out 10 days. Not 10 days every month, but it was happening every month. There's a couple things that are defined in statute, particular compulsory school attendance. Johan Yelengren with the Colorado Department of Education says every district has a different approach to attendance. A lot of those are built around this idea that districts are creating attendance policies to support um, students and families within their districts. Within Denver Public Schools, an excused absence requires approval by the parent, guardian, or school. You can simply call and excuse your child from class. Baffour did it 52 times. Her reasons range from illness to injury to family business, and in some cases, no excuse at all. I asked, no truancy ticket, that was no answer. Just eight of their absences were unexcused. The threshold for truancy is four unexcused absences per month or 10 per year. The truancy is just that an unexcused absence. Because his absences were mostly excused, Demetrius was considered chronically absent, meaning he missed 10% or more of school. During the last school year, 43% of DPS students fell into this category, including Demetrius, who missed 37%. They come to your house and wonder why, what's going on. They didn't do that? 60 days of school? We reached out to Denver Public Schools to ask if it was too easy for kids like Demetrius to be missing from school for long periods of time by having an excused absence. The district said in part, it is constantly evaluating and revising our guidance protocols and practices around attendance to better address when a student is chronically absent. I think it was very eye opening for us. Ashley Elementary isn't going to wait for the district to put out new policies. Now, after three absences, whether we know if they're excused or not, we as the teacher contact the parent, let them know that their child has been absent and that it's important that they come to school. And then after that, our admin and attendance team will continue to call and set up a meeting if they're still not showing up to school. They hope these extra steps will identify when a kid is missing before it's too late. Just to make sure that we don't have something like this happen again, that we can do our part to keep our kids in school and safe. While the superintendent would not sit down to speak with me one on one, he did send a statement regarding Demetrius's death. It says in part, I am heartbroken both as a leader of Denver Public Schools and as a father. This tragedy underscores the importance of all community members being involved in protecting our children, educators, neighbors, families. All of us have to be involved. So there has been no change though now in the district's policy still? No change. No, no change, change after Demetrius's death or Caden McWilliams, if you all remember this. Mm -hmm. This was back in 2018. Seven-year-old boy was found in a doll kennel covered in cement, dead in a storage unit. His parents were convicted of murder and child abuse months later. Yep. 
He was last seen in school two weeks before school ended. He was unenrolled in August, and then his body was found in the storage unit covered in cement in December. So two DPS students both went missing from school. They weren't seen in class, both now dead in a span of four years. Keeping these kids safe really comes down to school attendance and being able to see if this child is present and if this child is in class. And at Ashley Elementary, they're now taking the extra steps to do that. But will the district do the same? I just feel like there were so many areas where there are safeguards in place to make this so it doesn't happen and they just weren't followed through. You either look at it to where there are safeguards that are in place or there are safeguards that are not in place at all. Because let's go back to the last story. There is no law that states DHS has to go back and check on these kids after they are left with families and reach permanency. Within the school district, they're only con concerned about unexcused absences. Okay, you have four unexcused absences in a month or you have 10 within a year. Okay, cool, you know, that's fine. This student is labeled this, but you can pick up the phone and call every day as a mother and say, oh, my kids aren't coming to school today. They aren't mm -hmm. going to question that. You just give an excuse. Mm -hmm. well, she did it 52 times. And with everything that you're talking about, I have to ask because a lot of people are going to be wanting to know what are the next steps in all of this? Well, we're continuously trying to do more with this story. Um, the next hope is to do more about this law when it comes down to mandatory reporting because we know that gets a little murky. Susan Baffour, she's in court tomorrow. Um, we're expecting her to make a plea of either guilty or not guilty, and we will then see what happens after that and if this will go to trial. Yeah. Okay. Wow. All right. Darius, thanks for the update.